Hello friends, we're back for part two of this Martin D28 bridge re-glue and fret level job which turns out to be a D35 with a three piece back. There was a velcro stuck to the serial number plate and the work order said D28 so that's what I went with. So my apologies, it doesn't really affect how I approach these repairs but I'm just letting you know. Okay? Okay. Come on Dusty. Back to work. Yay! Today we're going to finish up the bridge and then share with you the various methods I use in performing fret levels on acoustic guitars. First, I gotta pop out these little plastic pins. Good thing I put the wax in, it makes it a little easier in the, the little uh, shim, provides some leverage without damaging the bridge. I'm gonna drill out the glue from the holes there. Paper towel will help catch most of that stuff. It just makes it a little easier to clean up when that time comes around. There's a little bit of glue squeeze up through the old pickup hole so we'll need to chisel that out. Two cherries makes a nice little narrow chisel that's great for getting into uh, narrow slots. Now that the strings are off, I need to readjust the neck. I tap down all the high frets I could find off camera and check for any loose ones. In preparation for the fret leveling, the object is to find the best compromise so that we take as little off the frets as possible and only the worst defenders get the most leveling. I'm pretty sure the radius is about 16 inches, but it's good to double check. I don't usually mark up the frets with a sharpie because I have pretty good lighting, but I'll do it for the camera. I mostly take my cues from the dust that collects on the fingerboard. They're a pretty good indicator of what's going on. i take a few light passes with the radius block to see where the bad boys are. So as I'm reading the tea leaves, as it were, I see the upper fingerboard has high spots. Fret 7, 8, 9 has high spots. Some deep pitting in the first position. Low spot after the 12th fret there. Some pitting in the first position. I'm going to start there and start there and then focus on these little pits in the first position. I like to place my neck rest at the fourth, fifth fret area. The neck is less likely to move under the pressure of the sanding block when you place it there. Continuing on lightly, I'm favoring the high spots, checking with the straight edge as often, often as I go, identifying high spots and low spots.
Okay, let's see where we're at. Okay, still a little rocking around the fifth fret there. Seventh fret. I think we're gonna need to work that middle fingerboard a little heavier than I'd like. I'll probably back the truss road off a little bit so I'm not misreading the neck. Now, I know I'm going to have to focus on those first position pits. That's going to change how I interpret what's happening in the middle of the fretboard. So, let's focus on them first. Those pits have got to go. Oh, someone likes their cowboy cords there. Uh, that G note is the last hold out there. It's the deepest. Oh, hi there. On the left hand side where you can't see, I can feel that the middle of the neck is <clears throat> teetering as well means we're sort of changing the dynamic a little. And I'm going to take a few more light passes here, but we're going to get rid of that pit. Sometimes on more budget repairs, um, I'll actually take a chisel and lift the fret and freeze it in place so that I don't have to take too much off of the surrounding frets. Focus right in on there. Okay, a few light whitewash passes here. On the upper fingerboard, work my way down to the middle. Let's see what's going on.
or tighten the truss rod just a little bit to exaggerate uh, any spots that have any issues. I'm just going to chase it down one more time. There's a transition area there where I had to work that area so hard. I'm going to move <clears throat> backwards towards the middle of the neck a little bit. And just, just keep checking. Look for look for places where it's hanging up. Uh, just a little tiny spot there. I'll probably hit that one more time. All right, enough of that. Let's get this thing cleaned off. I'm gonna recrown the frets. I know it looks like a lot, a lot of dust there, and yes, there is some, but a, a lot of that dust is from the sandpaper wearing down as well, so. The upper frets just need a, a light rinse. I'll flip the guitar around so I can get at it from a better angle and make sure that the, the ends there get a fair pass. Sometimes I tape off the fingerboard at this stage and sometimes I don't. On new or newer guitars, I usually always do. There is some light wear and tear on the fingerboard. So I'm opting to sand the frets without tape to freshen up the wood a bit and chase it down with 4 rot steel wool. Then I'll tape it before I bring it to the buffer to preserve that look. So as I'm sanding the frets, I start out with a uh, a sanding uh, foam sanding block. Then I'll switch to a 3M sanding pad, which is about 220 grit. Then I'll move to a 400 grit, a 600 grit, a thousand grit, 1500 grit, and finally the four rod steel wool. And we'll get this taped up in a jiffy. Okay, off to the buffing room. This would be scary to some people. You do have to take care. I've done this so many times that it's second nature. You don't want to linger too long in any one spot. You don't want to warm the fret up and possibly cause it to get loose. I see you know, a lot of people do this by hand. Uh, no. All right, we'll get this tape off. They're all. I heat the tape up a little bit, especially where it's on the finish there, so this guitar is a little dried out. I don't want to peel off any of the finish or warming it up gently will help uh, it disadhere from the top. Ta-da! Okay, let's get her strung up. See what we got. Martins need a really long 
wrench to get in all the way to the truss rod. All right, one more check with a straight edge. Looking good.